Okay, so I wanted to do this video basically on some things I've seen with Anna Ginger Rose, I think is her name, or something of that nature. Um, and she basically um, had a video on a specific person that I specifically basically um, had an had a past with, had a history with, basically. Um, there was this whole situation that went down. She thought that it had to do with light skin anonymous it didn't light skin anonymous i did i the whole situation was there was the ratio of light skin black women and light skin black uh, men and light brown skinned black men and women that's what my whole problem was with the channel was just you know we exist i'm proud and no just because you want to claim that you have a light skin channel that's supposed to be some kind of motivation and um, some kind of um, empowerment to lighter skinned women that's not real because what you're saying is the only way that it's good is if we acknowledge to be mixed and not acknowledge to being who we actually are and you know this is why i like to have the reality of you know nigerian people and this is a major reason why for me I get a lot of hate, specifically when I'm very open about my racial background because it's like people think you have to be darker than a paper bag at least, much darker than a paper bag in many cases, some people think, you know, to be a full black person. Well, you don't present that way. They tend to think, okay, so it's not your genetics, so you must be doing something. And it's like, what? Why don't you pay attention to all the Nigerians who look the same damn way? How come when I go on certain Nigerian pages, nobody's looking like, what the fuck? They're like, oh. Nobody's acting like, oh, she looks weird. She looks like she shouldn't. She doesn't belong with her. They don't act that way. And I mean on the photos that you are talking about saying that they don't look like Nigerian people. Nigerian people look like that. I've actually racially analyzed Nigerian people. Many of them don't have facial features that are in line with African people. It's what it is. What does it matter? Anyway, honestly, if you look at their history, sometimes they say the house of Iwani have history with the North Africans, whatever, you know, it's a small amount, and anyway, they're black people, you know, but the point is, you know, these people are just like, you know, like how Ethiopian people are, and Ethiopian people have a different phenotype too than other African people, and so do Khoisan people have a different phenotype than a lot of other African people. That doesn't mean that, you know, we have a phenotype that is you know, fake, or distorted, or not true, or deceptive. Why, why is it that the African phenotype that people are so genuinely willing to accept is seen as the true phenotype? That's what I never understood. It's like, well, who's to know who came first, honestly? I would think someone who was lighter skinned came first, because you have to think, in the continent of Africa, people came from the continent who were non-black, right? So they had to have a lighter hue to at least develop into whiter looking people, right? So then that would mean the people in Africa were lighter skinned, not dark skinned. Maybe after time, they actually develop to be darker skinned and have more Afrocentric, what people think are Afrocentric features or whatever, you know. So, to me, that's my perspective, you know. Um, and that's a thing that I had an issue with that individual on. The whole issue I had with Chris's smiles had nothing to do with light skin and on. 
because the Red Skin Anonymous, I specifically had the whole problem before that whole 500 worth of comments thread, basically. There was a whole thread with 500 comments. By the first comment that was made in that thread on YouTube, I was already blocked on Light Skin Anonymous because I didn't, we didn't agree on race. What happened with Twisted Smiles had more to do with black men. And with this whole new situation with Anos, it's like, you know, same situation, different year. Damn, you don't change the mindset, do you? But, you know, those insecurities don't go away if you don't deal with them. So, for me, when I was on that thread, the first thing that started the whole situation was, specifically, there were 500, basically, 500 biracial and mixed women freaking out, commenting, um, different types. Girl on Fire was one of them, by the way, just saying. Um, who were freaking out because I just didn't prefer black men. I said to a black man, and I was basically provoked because a black man attacked a dark-skinned black woman, attacked dark-skinned black women in general. I told him that he looked like a female. I told him that he had large, full, round, soft lips, high cheekbones, soft brown nose, almond-shaped eyes, and no body hair to speak of because y your body hair blends in right with your skin. Um, so, yeah, that's what I specifically said, that he looked like a woman and that black men that are dark skinned look like women. If you don't wear they have long hair, we see a woman, and we have to wait till you speak in order to understand, male or female. A major reason for this is because of the body type, too, and the height of black men. Black men aren't very tall, for example. So, when black men have, their height is usually, it's, it's comparable to a female's, basically. And then, on top of it, when a black man is overweight, Please, just hang it up, because we can't tell. I mean, black, you have to understand, fat people have body types that are very similar to each other in clothing. You can't really pay attention. Everything's messy, basically. Um, so that's what I mean. Very often, with black men, if they don't wear facial hair and they got long hair, we don't know, guy or girl. You you can have a fat white man do the same thing, you're always going to know he's a man. You can have a biracial man do the same thing, you are obviously going to know he is a man. So obviously, it's not about being fat either. It's about the fact that they just look feminine. Um, so anyway, I pointed that out. And I honestly dragged the dude. And then all the mammals, the light-skinned, biracial, and the ones my color came down and tried to drag me, got mad at me, and all this stuff, were angry. You know, and I held firm in what I believed. I did. I was just like, well, I just think, you know, that biracial men are more attractive and more masculine than dark-skinned black men. And it's so funny. These were biracial mixed and light-skinned and light-bound skinned women specifically getting mad because I did not think that dark-skinned men were the ideal look and I thought biracial men were the ideal look. So that was mainly the problem. I had several different people who were angry through that whole long thread. It was a humongous thread. It was cool though because I got a lot of views from it. But anyway, um, but I kind of did feel like maybe there was no space for me at that time because I felt like there was no platform for lighter skinned black women who were not interested in dark skinned men. And this is specifically why with Crystal Swirls, um, 
that's a major reason why I made my channel again, because I saw her channel, and I was like, oh, see, there's a space for us, basically, you know, even though I know she's not into biracial men, but I'm saying she's into men who aren't dark-skinned, and she's a lighter-skinned black woman. So, anyway, um, something that happened was these people basically um, went through a long thread and then eventually Twisted Smiles showed up. She showed up at the end. And what happened there was she basically was triggered because she has a dark skinned black husband. And then she kept trying to make up that I didn't like biracial women or I didn't like light skinned women or some kind of weird stuff, or white women, and it was weird, she had this whole weird narrative going on in her head and stuff, where she kept just chanting these things about me, and it was weird, because it was like, um, I think that's when I kind of went to saying something about, somehow we got onto the topic of her smoking marijuana. And me talking about, yes, marijuana is a drug, and you shouldn't get high in front of your kids. The kids could be actually, you know, allergic to marijuana, and they could literally die. So, I mean, like, it's totally unhealthy to do those kinds of things. And people who admit to smoking marijuana obviously don't just do marijuana. That's a gateway drug. People admit that, but in reality, oh, they, they're doing a whole bunch of drugs. Um, and... You know, so that was the whole thing, and she started freaking out so much more because I was saying that she was, you know, drug addicted and she was a bad mother. So it kind of like spiraled from talking about black men to that. And then she started getting so angry at my dark skinned black mother, and she kept trying to make up weird stuff. It was like odd. Because, I mean, like, I come from a middle-class family. Everybody knows that. My family is middle-class, and I've had no um, problems with, like, economics in regard to that. I mean, and my family, um, the amount of money that I've received from my family during, you know, my 20s and things of that nature, I mean, if I had a broke you know, black as damn family like she probably has, I would, I, I don't know where I'd be, I mean, like, my, my finances would look so different, but, you know, my family has always been supportive, and my family has, you know, I don't have income problems like that, but, um, she, I think she wanted to fit this narrative of black women being from, uh, like the ghetto but the thing is with me the way i was taught was that um i was taught that black people from the ghetto are black people from the ghetto it doesn't matter your color it's kind of weird to me to think what do you mean what do you like really seriously what do you mean that because someone's white skin, they're not from the ghetto? What? This is, that's a weird concept you've got going on. Because I've seen tons of light skinned people who are from the ghetto. Um, honestly, from my experience, I've seen light skinned people who act more ghetto because they think it's more black. So they're trying to outdo it more than dark skinned women. Either way, one thing I was taught as a child by my mother, who is dark skinned by the way, um, she taught me to be fearful of black women. That includes women like Twisted Smiles. And for example, not just her, other women like um, Bossy for example, I was taught to fear women like that too. Um, and some other people basically, uh, white skin and non would be similar too. Um, so, I mean, 
you know, people like that, I was taught to actually fear. I was taught to avoid, my mother actually avoided black women um, when I was growing up, honestly. I just have always had a positive perspective towards black women because it's like, yeah, there's some that are ghetto, but there are also some that are normal. And I like the normal ones, you know. The normal ones don't bother me, you know. You see, black men who are dark-skinned, who are normal, they might be normal, and they might be okay. Yeah, they're fine. But sometimes it's still like you're still trying to